What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you some information about the world of Eora that Avowed is set in. So like many of you, I was very excited to see the reveal of a RPG by Obsidian because, you know, they're always pretty great. But moreover, I was especially excited when I found out it was being set in the world of Eora, which is the Pillars of Eternity universe that Obsidian has already published games in before. So right off the bat, if you haven't played Pillars of Eternity 2, I'm going to spoil a pretty significant portion of that talking about the world of Eora. There's some important notes about the workings of the world of Eora that Pillars of Eternity 2 covers. Now, I'm not going to spoil like a ton of it, a ton of it, but there will be big reveals towards the end of the game that I am going to mention. So just be aware of that if you're watching this. First up in this little video, we're gonna talk about the gods of Eora. Now, what are they? Technically, the gods, much like in, ironically enough, Divinity Original Sin 2, were actually just a race of people at one point called the Ingwithans. The Ingwithans, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, by the way, I might be butchering it, but like Ingwithans is the best you're gonna get out of me. The Ingwithans were an ancient civilization that created technology that then became what's known as the Wheel. We'll get into the Wheel here in just a minute. Those gods are Eothis. Eothis is the god of light. He is actually dead. He found out the hard way that becoming gods actually kind of barred them from the mortal world directly. Because when gods take an avatar form in the world, it costs a great deal because the physical bodies of the world and the actual people that have to inhabit can't actually take the power of a divine well. It costs a great deal of soul energy. Again, we'll get into that in a minute. Then there is Galloway. He is the god of nature, the hunt, assassins, basically think her scene from the Elder Scrolls. He's basically that. There is Barath. She is the goddess of the wheel, which is basically the cycle of life and death. There is Magrain. She is the goddess of fire and also like a warrior's temper, that kind of thing. There is Abaddon, the smith, and he is, as you might imagine, the god of crafting and the forge. Then there is Skane, the god of of hatred and rebellion. There is Andra, the god of waters, the sea, the storms, all of that kind of stuff. There is my personal favorite, Rimmergrand, the god of oblivion, and not just like death, but a true ending to all things. He wants like nothing short of the absolute destruction of everything through the inherent powers of entropy. But basically, he's the god of oblivion, and he wants everything to end. Then there's Hylia, the goddess of uh, birds, air, the winds, that kind of thing. There is Whale, the god of secrets. Not really a specific gender to any of these, by the way, but no one personifies that more than Whale, because Whale is basically the Hermaeus Mora of Eora. Much like Hermaeus Aura, t Mora tends to be a kind of amalgamation of tentacles and junk. Whale is like an amalgamation of eyes everywhere. That brings us to probably the most important one, especially when we're talking about Avowed, and that is Wodica. So Wodica is the god that is worshipped by the Oathbinders, and that's important because the symbol you see in the Avowed trailer is the logo of the Oathbinders. So they're probably worshipping her, so that would tell you that's probably important. Now, Wodica is the goddess of rule and law. Now that we have the gods out of the way, let's talk about the thing they created, the wheel. So, much like the gods of Divinity Original Sin 2, they created a system by which people live their lives, gather energy, deposit it where the gods can feed on it, and are then reborn. Basically what happens is the Ingwithans created the wheel, which is actually just physical technology in the world that we find out about in Pillars of Eternity 2, which is a big part of that story. My point is, is that this is technology that people made. What happened before that, who knows, because this is all ancient history. The gods made it through this technology that when souls die, they are drawn towards the Adra. Adra is this giant green stone substance. The Adra serves as a conduit between the real world and the in-between, which is basically the afterlife before souls become reincarnated. Souls go to the Adra when they die, are shuffled into the in-between, and the gods do what they do and feed off that energy, and then once that soul is fractured and kind of broken down, it's returned to the world into another person, or being, whatever you want to call it. So the Adra pillars that the Pillars of Eternity universe is named after are 
tantamount to the world, basically. They house the souls and they facilitate this transfer. But it's worth noting that Adra is also used for other things. These pillars can be mined and broken down and turned into other stuff, which allows mortals connections to a realm they would otherwise never see, especially in the case of luminous Adra, which is Adra that is just so jam-packed with soul energy it literally glows. Which I think might be important because the avowed title screen kind of shows it glowing that green color which may or may not be related to that. Honestly, that's just speculation, but just something to know. Now that we've got uh, the big pieces out of the way, the gods, the concept of the wheel, how people are being reborn constantly. Now let's move on to the races you could potentially play as in Avowed. Now there are races and there are sub races. So first of all, we have the Amawa, which are basically kind of like island people. Personally, it kind of reminds me of like uh, American Samoa type stuff. I don't really know what else to call it culturally, but it's kind of in that vein. Um, island people, they tend to live in uh, archipelagos, that kind of thing. They are s broken up into the sub-races of island and coastal Amawa, which really turns down to like a skin color difference. We have dwarves, uh, mountain and boreal, which is more of just where they live. Elves, we have pale elves and wood elves. Pale elves live in uh, the frozen wastes, whereas wood elves, of course, live in forests, that kind of thing. We have humans, which are broken into sub-races of basically where humans are from, uh, meadow, ocean, or savanna. Then we have Orlans. Orlans are like halflings and furries all at the same time. They're like, they remind me of Ewoks a ton, to be honest. So there's that for you. Uh, you can have a wild Orlan, which uh, typically is less groomed. And then you have hearth Orlans who have adapted more to modern society. And then most interestingly, we have the godlike. Now, godlike are technically one of the other races. However, in the womb, before they were born, they were touched by a god. There is a specific reason why gods do this, but basically godlike take on the aspects of one of the gods that, you know, imbued them in the womb. Now, typically, when we are playing the Pillars of Eternity games, we can play as a death godlike, a fire godlike, a moon godlike, or a nature godlike. And they take on various kind of high fantasy aspects, like fire, of course, they're kind of like blazing. Some of them have like horns. Moon godlike will have like literal moon-shaped protrusions around their head and stuff. Nature godlike will have like green skin and grow flowers and junk like that out of their skin. But like I said, these are technically one of another race at the same time. So you'll see godlike with different statures depending on like which race they came from. So you can have a fire godlike who has the stature of an elf because it was born to elven parents, just like you can have a death godlike with an Amawa stature because it was born to Amawan parents. So those are some of the races you might play as in Avowed. It's a high fantasy setting, so pretty much all of the classes and magic you're pretty much going to be familiar with. It's your standard stuff besides two things specifically I want to mention. Chanters are a type of bard, basically, but what their magic is actually doing is when they're channeling their songs and chanting, as you might imagine, what they're doing is they're calling to souls in the in-between, and they use the connection to those souls through the power of their chants to basically ask the souls for help. They pull magic from those souls. So in theory, if you speak a specific chant, it will call to souls of a certain type that will then imbue you with some of their knowledge that they gathered in life, that kind of thing. And then there are ciphers. Cipher magic is probably the most interesting as far as Pillars of Eternity goes. It's basically mind and soul magic. They can pull at a person's essence and use that as the basis of their magic. They're very good at kind of like reading people's minds, um, affecting people's moods, things like that. They're very much so into controlling people's minds. And it is like a whole dedicated form of magic that people practice in Pillars of Eternity. And moreover, Eora. Moving on to some of the factions you'll find out. So as you've probably noticed already, I do have a map of what is known of Eora up on the screen already. And the big empires that we will likely run into are Adir, Old Vela, Rawatai, and the Huana who control the Deadfire Archipelago. Now, because we don't know when on the timeline Avowed is actually going to be set, I don't know the state of any of these people, I'm just going to give you a general overview. Obviously, Avowed might add totally new ones, they might, you know, go so far in the future that some of these don't exist, they might be a prequel so none of these exist, we don't know when on the timeline Avowed is going to be, I can only guess, 
I'm going to say it's probably a prequel, to be honest, just from like leaks and stuff that I've seen, but that is just speculation. So with that in mind, as it stands, what we know about Adir is like your standard medieval kingdom, but they're really big. It's where Pillars of Eternity 1 took place, like, you know, standard medieval high fantasy stuff. That's basically Adir. Then there is Old Vela. Old Vela was actually used to be a much bigger empire, but it was a congregation of merchants and things. Now, due to infighting, they fell and kind of splintered out a little bit, which is why they're called Old Vela now. But nonetheless, they are very rich, and they still use that influence, uh, the influence of their economy, to help their global standing, shall we say. Then we have Rawatai. Rawatai are mostly Amawa, but they are like the polar opposite of the Huana. So whereas the Huana are tribal Amawa who really embrace their island culture, the Rawatai are trying to be a more modern empire and have embraced very much so modern technology, and they're trying to control as much land as possible, that kind of thing. And they're a very battle-hardened people that is made very clear in uh, Deadfire. And then we have, of course, the Huana, which, like I just mentioned, are tribal by nature. Um, they're not keen on outsiders. That is a big focus of Deadfire. Now, technically, what the Huana are are just a tribe of Amawa. So they're the biggest tribe, and there are other tribes that technically fall under the banner of Huana. Those are the four kind of big empires, shall we say, that are kind of going on in the world of Eora at the moment. However, they're not the only ones. So there's a lot of small independent kingdoms and areas of this map aren't nearly as defined. So on this map, the part that says the white that wins and the living lands are areas of the world that are not tamed. They are wild areas. Think Amazon jungle type stuff. Except for the white that wins, think maybe more like Antarctica, perhaps. But my point is these areas of the world are not tamed and they are still very much so wild areas. And it is rumored that Avowed is probably going to be set in the Living Lands, which honestly to me would make the most sense, but I guess we'll see what happens. Again, that is speculation. There you go, guys. There is some information on the world of Eora. There's a map of what known Eora looks like. To me, the fun part about Pillars of Eternity 2 is it's like high fantasy meets medieval, but like on the cusp of an industrial revolution because they're really starting to get into guns and stuff like that but it's still kind of like a medieval hierarchy in a lot of places. So I really like the, just the combination of that aesthetic. It really spoke to me. I actually have about 150 or so hours in Pillars of Eternity 2. Now, to be honest, I bounced off of Pillars of Eternity 1 pretty hard. I, I just couldn't get into it. But I loved Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. It was so good. So with that said, if you want to find out more than I talked about with the overview of what Aora is, I highly highly recommend you play Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. You don't need to have played the first one to get the story, but Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire is such a great game. I couldn't recommend it more. And seeing how Avowed is likely still years away, you should totally check it out in the meantime. Now, thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.